Hey everybody and welcome to another uh, episode here on AP World History in 516. Thanks for watching. Um, today we are going to be looking at what a solid LEQ is. All right, so today we're going to be looking at a student of mine's example and I'm going to break it down and I'm going to show you the process of how I look at an LEQ, how I grade it, and things that I'm looking for to satisfy the rubric. Because after all, like as you're writing an LEQ, you're writing for the rubric. You're not trying to write a perfect essay, but rather you're just trying to get the points necessary as described by College Board to get the rubric. All right, so let's get started. All right. So, uh, environmental factors played a critical role in the Industrial Revolution, which allowed many nations to prosper. He provides examples here. England was a country that benefited. The Industrial Revolution took place between the years 1750 to 1900, and it was caused by the Enlightenment ideas, nationalism, capitalism, etc. All right. Now, whenever I look at this paragraph, the first thing that I key in on is this sentence right here. I'm going to highlight that um, and put it in this kind of orange color. Now, whenever I look at this, uh, this is the thesis statement, right? So the prompt is basically looking at evaluate the impact that environmental factors played in the Industrial Revolution. So for here, he's specifically saying environmental factors played not just any role, but a critical role. And I'm going to underline that word right there. Um, words like adjectives are what help your thesis statement become a strong thesis statement. All right. So words like critical here are really important. And then he goes on, which allowed many nations to prosper. This, again, is kind of a secondary component of the thesis statement that is overall contributing. It's not that they only played a critical role to the Industrial Revolution, but it played a critical role in developing the wealth that we see in this time, and specifically here in England. Now, one kind of minor suggestion I would say here, or rather two suggestions, I think. Um, first, I would say, what are these environments? environmental factors. So environmental factors like, and then give a list of, usually I like to use list of three, so blank, blank, and blank, played a critical role in the Industrial Revolution, which allowed, which allowed nations like England to prosper, all right? You can kind of get rid of some of this uh, in parentheses. An AP reader will still read it, but just in terms of making it kind of a better flow of a sentence and a little bit stronger of a sentence, I would include what factors those were, as well as just replaced nations, put in a couple of examples, maybe England, um, eventually France, the United States gets involved at some point, right? So just providing those aspects right there. So this right here would satisfy the thesis statement portion of an LEQ rubric because of things like critical and then allowed for nations to prosper. Now, when I get into the second sentence, and this is what I try and teach all my students, is that the introductory paragraph has two purposes. The first purpose is to write a thesis statement. Now, it doesn't have to come in the introductory. Your thesis statement can go at the conclusion. However, most students prefer to put it here. But the second purpose is that an introductory paragraph allows you to give context for what's happening around this time. And if you're familiar with the rubric, you'll notice that providing this context is historical context, all right? So for here, I'm going to say that enlightenment ideas are important to us uh, when giving context. The reason why people are investing in the Industrial Revolution, creating businesses, um, is directly related to some of these enlightenment ideas. And again, the examples here, nationalism and capitalism. I would say probably uh, capitalism is a better example here, um, especially as we get into various types of businesses uh, like the Dutch East India Trading Company and the British East India Company. Um, these types of ideas where businesses are trying to make money are directly influencing the Industrial Revolution because in the Industrial Revolution, there's this period of just intense production and creation of wealth. All right. So in this paragraph, this student would get not only the thesis statement point, but also 
the historical context point. And if you know anything about the averages for an LEQ, it's probably somewhere between a two and a three range. So if you can get two points within an introductory paragraph, you're pretty much guaranteed to beat the average. All right, so moving on. One major environmental factor was waterways. All right, what I like about this sentence is that it's just short, sweet, and to the point. There's nothing extra in there. Right. So we understand that waterways are our biggest thing here. All right. This was because the steam engine had been invented and then it was used to create the steamboat. All right. So we're kind of understanding like waterways were created because something happened. Something had to push the development of these waterways. So the steam engine, the steamboat. And it goes on to explain, this boat could flow up and downstream, which allowed countries to transport goods in an easier way. What I like about this is this transition of which, all right, and I'll highlight it here. Um, whenever I think about how to get analysis and reasoning points on an LEQ, it's, a, I think, a very simple structure of this leads to this, which leads to this, all right? The steam engine leads to the steamboat. The steamboat does this, which allows countries to transport goods faster. Now, one thing that you could do to improve this is to say, okay, if people are able to transport goods quicker and easier, that means that one, people have more access to these goods. And if people have greater access, they're probably buying more of them. And if they're buying more of them, then that means that the factory that makes those goods has to make more goods, which again, just reinforces this system of industrial revolution. All right, we're gonna skip on because I think the student does a better job of showing that kind of, this leads to this leads to this, which leads to this in a different paragraph. But let's take a look at the third one. Whether or not a country had access to coal was essential for the industrial revolution. I would say that this is a stronger topic sentence than this one up here because it's saying coal specifically is essential for starting the industrial revolution. So I'm going to highlight that one. That way we can make sure that we understand that that's an important part of this. The steam engine operated with steam, so something had to burn to make this steam. This item was coal. If a country did not have coal, then they would have not experience the effects of the Industrial Revolution that were beneficial, wealth and power. Um, my thought here is that, yeah, that may be true, but countries are actively trading with one another. They're trading natural resources. They could have just as easily bought coal from a particular place. Now, they may not have experienced it as strong as what a place like England did, but they probably still would have experienced it. Going on, for example, England had access to large amounts of coal, which is why they had the lead in the first industrial revolution, all right? Coal, access to coal, directly leading to some sort of impact, especially linking it here to England. Other places like Africa may have not had access to coal, therefore they fell behind during this revolution. Okay, good at talking about, look, not only does uh, having access to these natural resources mean that you will benefit from the Industrial Revolution, but it's almost a vice versa here. So it's looking at both sides of, you know, places like Africa, China, Japan, they are falling way behind, whether it's because of their lack of natural resources or because they are isolationists. They are actively falling behind and therefore not making the same sorts of advancements or reaping the same benefits as places like England, the United States, and uh, Germany. But let's go on. Raw materials were also a, f a major environmental factor during the Industrial Revolution. With coal, factories were made, and these factories turned raw materials into manufactured goods. England used raw materials to make their steel ships. When raw materials were turned into manufactured goods, they would be traded or sold to increase the wealth of a country. England got much of their raw materials from their colonies in the Americas, which is another reason why they gained the lead in the Industrial Revolution. Again, like we see these words of which um, and these linking things, bringing them together. When raw materials were turned into manufactured goods, they would be traded or sold to increase the wealth. We see this continue just building upon. Same thing here, especially for this sentence. I'll highlight it for you. 
With coal, factories were made, and these factories turned raw materials into manufactured goods. England used raw materials to make their steel ships, and then again, just emphasizing, like, these things are all building upon one another. And when you start to do this sort of writing, and you do it consistently throughout your paragraphs, this is where you're getting not only that first analysis and reasoning point, but the second one as well. Now let's look at the last body paragraph, and I think this is the strongest body paragraph that this student writes because they, again, build upon this leads to this leads to this leads to this, and I think if that's your approach to LEQ writing, that's the name of the game. So, it can be argued that agricultural productivity was what started the Industrial Revolution. Again, talking about agricultural productivity as an environmental aspect. One agricultural technology advanced uh, the seed drill, the development of crop rotation. I would say that these examples right here are one easy way for this student to at least get one of the evidence points. All right, this student by this time has already got both evidence points, not only because of the seed drill, the development of the crop, uh, crop rotation, but also by specifically stating things like agricultural productivity, waterways, coal, etc. And this is where the student does a nice job of explaining the agricultural productivity and the impact that it's going to have on industrial revolution. So, uh, with fewer workers, we're needed to produce more food. If there's more food, the population rose. All right, we'll highlight that there. Because of the population rising, that means that there's more people to work in the factories because as people lose their jobs in the rural areas, they're forced to migrate, which is called urbanization. They move to these city centers and they find jobs in factories. With more people in the factories, more goods are manufactured. All right, again, we're linking sentences upon sentences. When more manufactured goods, this, ca this causes the country to increase in wealth. All right. So one thing that perhaps the student could have done just a little bit better is kind of explain uh, because there was less people to uh, produce food, there just wasn't as much of a need there. That made them then tr uh, travel to cities uh, in this form of urbanization, which then kind of sparked this massive workforce for factories. And then from there, we go into the cotton industry and how that played a role. Perhaps this could be used as a second paragraph, but cotton being an agricultural product, it falls in line in this paragraph. So it talks about how using things like the cotton gin impacts how easy it is for cotton to be separated from the seed. Um, this, I think, would be a nice place to introduce how slavery actually increased during this time and how King Cotton came on the scene. Um, but nonetheless, I think this is the best paragraph that this student writes here because, again, we're linking one sentence to another, drawing one connection to the next connection to the next connection to the next connection. And that's how you get some of these analysis and reasoning points. All right. And then lastly, in summary, agricultural productivity, waterways, coal, and raw materials were all interconnected to one another. Agriculture led to more people to work in factories. These factories operated on coal to turn raw materials into manufactured goods, and these goods were then transported with waterways. These were the environmental factors that impacted the Industrial Revolution. Again, in this final paragraph, just emphasizing these things are linked together. It's not that just one thing is responsible for it, but rather they're all interconnected. All right. So for me, in terms of the points, all right, the thesis, check. All right. Historical context, check. All right. With historical context, he gained that in that first paragraph. Uh, the evidence points, one and two, this one, this student gets both of them, all right, simply because of just the sheer amount of uh, information here, not only from things like water frame uh, or waterways or the Industrial Revolution, seed drill, all of that. That's how you get the evidence points. This is an evidence point is basically just a vocabulary dump. That's all it is. And as long as it's connected to the prompt, that's what the AP readers are looking for. And then lastly, the analysis 
and reasoning points. There's two points. This student, I think, would get both of them simply because of this paragraph right here in particular. There's some other areas where I think the student does this kind of linking together. But if you want to get both of those analysis and reasoning points, take a look at this paragraph right here. Pause the video if you want to. Take a look at it, and you'll be able to see what I mean. Anyway, um, if you agree with this, um, you know, let me know. Uh, if you think that I've looked at this and say, eh, I don't know about that, here's why I think that. Make sure you comment on the video below. And as always, if you like the video, make sure that you like it. Uh, and if you're not subscribed, make sure that you subscribe. Anyway, my name is Justin, and this is AP World History in 516. Thanks for watching.